This artifacts of Mars. It appears that maybe the scientists are starting to say that ESP is real, at least to some extent. You make up your mind about that one way or the other. This is your mad science update for today. Is it really mad science or is it real? Human brains are interconnected through a type of Wi Fi which allows us to pick up far more information about other people than we are aware of. The leading professor claims. Professor Digby Tantum, clinical professor of psychotherapy at the University of Sheffield, Sheffield that's in the UK, believes that the language plays only a part of how humans communicate and that actually the brain is working hard to pick up my, tiny micro signals that communicate what a person is thinking. I've thought that for uh, many years, actually. Many years. He explains how people have often have a gut feeling or intuition about a person or situation even if they cannot logically determine why. Oh well, yeah, you're picking up on what they think. And it may be the reason why commuters find it so difficult to maintain eye contact on a busy train. Too many people overload the brain with too much subliminal information. In addition, it may also explain how, why laughter is infectious. There you have the uh, mad science professor, if he is mad. Frankly, I'm with him on this. Professor Tantum describes the phenomenon as an interbrain and outlines the theory in the new book of the same name. We can know directly about other people's emotions and what they are paying attention to. He said it's based on direct connection between their brains and other people's, and between the, their brain and ours. I call this interbrain. I call it ESP, uh, Professor Tantum. One of its disadvantages, one of its advantages is that the connection exists in the background. We take it for granted the muscle is brought to the surface of our minds. People with autism have little or no inner brain connection. They are often able to pick up or learn what expressions mean, yet doesn't seem to solve the problem of lack of human connection. Professor Tantum believes that communication between brains may happen as an inadvertent leak, and it may be linked to smell. Areas of the brain that have the most activity in neurons are located in prefrontal cortex, and are linked with smelling. They're also situated where the, they follow the gaze. So, uh, slight changes in a person's chemistry could, for example, Example, emit molecules that signal fear, illness, or sexual arousal, even if they are not saying or doing anything that studies suggest. The input from the brain eyes gets carried back to the back of the brain for processing, but receptors in those contact the thin extrusion of the brain tissue directly, added Professor Tantum. The area of the brain that is closest to the nose is orbital frontal cortex. It might be because so many of our basic connections with other people are via smell. Uh, called pheromones, Professor Tantrum. Tan Professor Tantum also argues that inner brain is the reason why people are drawn to religions or feel the need to come together in huge crowds at football matches or concerts. Uh, they mean soccer, by the way. That's what we call it. They call it football, but whatever. The experience of transcendence is one thing, and this might be the root of t spirituality. Indeed, what many people 
would consider the meaning of life. Being in a crowd mode also makes us experience what it would be like to transcend our perspective, our time, our place, and our capacity to feel for a moment like a di dri driving being. It may also explain why some people commit atrocities like murder and terrorism. The book argues that feelings of hate, disgust, rage, and contempt effectively switch off the inner brain, making it impossible to see a situation from another person's point of view. Well, there's more going on there, Professor Tantum, than just that. However, Professor Tantum believes that the internet could have a damaging effect on such communication which has evolved over millions of years, which I dispute. And what probably sets human parts humans apart from other animals. So I'm gonna break this down, uh it's called the ESP Professor Tantum. I don't know about small part, that's outside of my thing, but uh, it's called the ESP. Some people, I can feel, you know, I can feel them, I don't mean in a physical sense. You used to have a supervisor and be sitting there nodding off for a daily meeting, the instant he walked up, I'd open my eyes and he'd be right there. One way. Others, no such thing. Uh, some people are basically sealed off from this. Others you can see right through them if you just try. See, we're taught, uh, we're taught all our lives that it's not possible to read minds, it's not possible to know the future. We're taught all our lives that. Uh, especially by religion. Religion is the number one thing where they tell us it, if you uh, know something in advance, it's off the top. This is um, what turns me off on religion. Sorry, this is all natural, folks. It's called ESP. Da! I'm Artifacts of Mars. It's your Mad Science update for today. Thanks for watching.